These pieces are not ironed, but I found a set of parameters that create surfaces that almost match the iron look for roughly 34% less print time. This came about when my friend Critical asked me to help test a guide that he was working on. He recognized that when people use ironing, they can get some pretty bad results, and some of the parameters people use are highly divergent. He had the idea that if they improve their top surfaces and make them more consistent, then maybe the ironing would be easier and turn out much better. Critical mentioned this to me after my last video. At that time, I had other problems on my mind. Through doing hundreds of experimental runs with a one variable at a time approach, I recognized two problems with the way that I was doing things. One, these experiments are expensive because they require a lot of samples to fully define the relationships that you're investigating. Two, these experiments do not make it easy to recognize variable interactions. In this context, a variable interaction is when the value of one independent variable is influenced by another. For example, when bridge flow is increased, bridge density must be decreased to help maintain bridge quality. So I'm just now catching up with what statisticians and scientists were doing between the 1920s and 80s. To help overcome my ignorance, I will use a method designed by one of the statisticians focused on these problems, George Box. We will apply this method to top surface parameters specifically to help solve all of the problems that I just mentioned. Assuming you have calibrated film at flow rate and dynamics, top surface quality is likely to benefit from tuning line width, flow ratio, and speed. If we create a reasonable range for each variable and align the midpoints of these axes, we can construct a spatial representation of the parameter combinations. I'll call this our design space. With the smallest useful step size, this space contains 19,200 possible combinations. Testing all of these combinations would take about 3,392 hours of print time for 1,280 batches of 15 5 gram PLA samples. Obviously, nobody does this because we can intuitively understand that you can see the broader patterns with way fewer samples. This perspective lets us massively reduce the combinations necessary for our experiments. When you look at this design space, you might notice a few things. For example, the parameters at the extremes of this design space, the corners, are more likely to cause failure. What Box did with his method was choose parameter combinations that tested the ends of the ranges of two parameters while keeping one at its midpoint. If you run the combination shown here, you can fit a quadratic function to the data and help map the results of a dependent variable to each set of independent variables. And I'll show you that in a moment. Applying this method is as straightforward as plugging the parameters into Bamboo Studio and printing 13 samples, one for each point in the design space. These were the results. To help me make sense of these, I devised a scoring system based on surface roughness and artifacts and used this system to sort the pieces into levels from 1 to 10. 1 would be equal to delamination or print failure, 10 would be equal to a piece that is ironed. With these pieces scored, we can put the data back into the model of our design space. And with that, we can see that there's a gradient forming where pieces towards the edge on the bottom right seem to be performing better. This is also backed up by the surface plots of quality. This data would suggest that a piece with a low line width, flow, and moderate speed would do well. In fact, the model with the constants created from this data suggested these parameters, which turned out really great. This was motivating, but I wanted to see if I could get an even better result, and there was still a lot of space left to explore. If you refer to Box's book, you will find that he has a set of solutions for this. The obvious options were to move the design space to the promising lower region and shrink it. But what I began to expect was that this wouldn't solve my original problem by mitigating samples. I would keep doing sets of 13 with smaller and smaller boxes. The question then became, how might I leverage the data that I have now and iterate towards the optimal of the design space that is left while printing the fewest amount of samples? So I thought back to my stats class in college and remembered that we learned about a technique called Bayesian optimization. It was good for this exact situation where it provided a technique for identifying the peaks in an unknown parameter space with just a few tests. To use this technique, I used the GP minimize function from scikit optimize. It produced a new set of parameter combinations that seemed logical. I ran these and saw improvement and realized that this was actually working. So I put the data back in and ran it again. 
The 3D printing god smiled upon this effort and blessed my nozzle with the ability to extrude these smooth little gems. These samples were nearly perfect, the only flaws being some transition lines or maybe some small gaps around the holes. I set up my base optimization to have high exploitation and relatively low exploration. This was done to reduce how many samples I needed to print to identify the cluster of parameters that worked. And that's exactly what it did. You can see that it was primarily shifting speed and flow and identified that these ranges performed well. All of these pieces in this region looked great when compared to the default, and a few were comparable to the standard ironing settings. As you saw at the beginning, I tried applying the same settings to other filaments and found results still in the 8 to 9 range of my quality scoring system without any filament specific tuning of the parameters. These results are even more impressive when you consider that the slow speeds of the top surface still yield pieces that are roughly 34% faster than ironing. So with the box banking to Bayesian optimization process established, I asked some friends to replicate these results. There were two successful replications and a failure. Critical printed and Johannes iterated to these pieces with their experiments. Manuel iterated to this piece, which we considered a failure due to the overall aesthetic and the fact that the optimization pushed him to the other side of the design space, primarily due to the bad scores have lower flows and line widths. Upon further investigation, we found that there was an issue with the flow rate on his printer. After he fixed that, he was able to create this. Johannes was able to use a microscope from his work and take these images of some of his samples that were midway through the optimization process. We haven't really used these yet because they were created just a day or two before publishing, but images like this may be used in future work to help enhance the scoring process and to understand what's going on. Also, I thought that they looked really cool, so I am putting them in the video because I couldn't pass up the opportunity to share them. In conclusion, Critical Printed and I took all this information and added some other bits to improve quality based on our experience and put it all into a guide that Critical has written. This will help you try these settings for yourself with as few prints as possible. To be clear, Critical independently wrote this guide and it is informed by his years of experience. I just helped by trying all the parameter combinations that wouldn't work and arguably providing statistical evidence to support his project. Thanks for watching.